Welcome to LMU Community TV News. I'm Allison Barnett. Thanks for joining us. Let's take a look at the stories we have for you today. The 8th Judicial District Attorney General's Office helped raise thousands of dollars for the children's centers in the district. In September, District Attorney Jared Effler and his staff held the third annual Children's Sporting Clays Tournament at Chihaui Sportsman's Club in Maryville. The event netted $42,000 to support children's centers of the 8th Judicial District. The event grew from 55 teams in 2017 to 66 teams this year. According to the press release, Effler developed the idea of a sporting clays tournament three years ago in an effort to find a unique fundraising opportunity that could bring people together across the district and benefit the children's centers. The children's centers in the district serve hundreds of children each year and work closely with local law enforcement and the district attorney general's office. They assist with medical examinations, forensic interviews, counseling, and therapy. The 8th Judicial District includes Claiborne, Fentress, Scott, and Union Counties. The city of Tazel will have the chance to rehabilitate homes on Cloud Street thanks to the Community Developed Block Grant. The city received the full $525,000 to bring eight houses up to code in the area. City recorder Robin Ruiz said several locations were considered. Cloud Street was chosen because the area had the most need among the available options. Contractors will begin inspecting the houses next year with hopes of starting the rehabilitation process halfway through 2019. No estimated completion date was given. Community Development Block Grant funds are used to promote economic and community development in small cities across the state. The Bell County League of Women Voters had their final candidate forum of the year on Thursday. The organization will host a debate between Middlesbrough mayoral candidates Bo Green and Rick Nelson at the Bell Theater. The event will start at 7 p.m. The two candidates advanced to the general election by receiving the most votes in the primary election in May. Nelson received almost 50 percent of the votes in May, while Green received 20 percent of the votes during the primary. Current Mayor Bill Kelly and City Councilman Lucas Carter were also on the ticket during the primary. The general election is two weeks away with voters casting their ballots on November 5th. Now let's take a look at your community calendar of events coming up over the next couple of weeks. The Bell County Historical Society is partnering with Discover Downtown Middlesbrough and other area local businesses to present Nightmare on 20th Street from 5 to 9 p.m. on October 27th. The theme this year is Halloween Carnival. The event is free to the public and is encouraged to come in a costume. There will also be haunted house, inflatables, TNT stables, trunk or treat, games, food, and more. Cumberland Chapter Number 170 of the Order of the Eastern Star will have a turkey dinner from 11 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. on November 4th at Martin Station Masonic Lodge on Dr. Thomas Walker Road, one mile west of Rose Hill, Virginia. Menu will be turkey, drinks, and dessert. Cost is $9 for adults, $6 for ages 5 to 12, and 5 and under is free. Carryout meals are $9, and proceeds will benefit the scholarship fund. That was your community calendar. We're now moving on to your LMU Community TV News 5-day weather forecast. To start your Tuesday off, the skies will be partly cloudy with a high of 39 degrees and a 5% chance of rain. As the day progresses, the clouds will move out and allow for some sun rays. The high will be 62 and the chance of rain is 0%. Looking at your three-day planner, Wednesday will be sunny with a high of 59 and a 10% chance of rain. Thursday will be mostly cloudy with a high of 55. Moving to your five-day, Friday will have a 90% chance of rain with a high of 49 degrees. Saturday will be mostly cloudy with a high of 54. That was a quick recap of your five-day forecast, but stay with us. It's coming up after the break. Brandon Burke will be bringing you your sports report right here on LMU Community TV News. What do we know about learning? It takes place beyond the pages of a book. We learn by exploring, by trying new things, by connecting, by sharing. We learn by taking chances and dreaming big. At Lincoln Memorial University, learning is beyond the books. It's everywhere. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. You see that truck? Oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen, all for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How we doing? So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Really? Is there 
Is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little like bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time! I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Hi, I'm Dr. Shields, and I'm a physician and the medical director at LMU Medical Clinics. This is a brief announcement about keeping LMU and you healthy during the upcoming flu season. Influenza, or flu for short, is a virus that causes fever, body aches, and upper respiratory symptoms like cough, runny nose, and sore throat. It is transmitted through the air and can even be spread on objects touched by someone who has the flu. The virus spreads easily from person to person and is most active from October through March. There are three things you can do to prevent becoming ill with the flu. First, get vaccinated. The most effective way of preventing the flu is to get the flu vaccine every year. The vaccine does not give you the flu or make you sick. The vaccine may not be 100% effective, however, it does offer significant protection and lessen the symptoms should you get the flu. The CDC recommends everyone six months and older be vaccinated before the flu season begins. Number two, wash your hands. Stop the spread of germs and protect yourself with frequent hand washing with soap or alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And third, if you are sick, stay home. Should you become ill with flu-like symptoms of fever, sore throat, cough, limit your contact with others. Schedule an appointment as soon as possible with LMU Medical Clinic or your healthcare provider. There are antivirals that may be indicated if started within 48 hours of symptoms. Stay home until you are fever-free for 24 hours without over-the-counter medications like Motrin or Tylenol. I'm Dr. Shields, and this has been a brief announcement about keeping LMU and you healthy during the upcoming flu season. Welcome back. It was nearly a perfect weekend for the Lady Rail Splitter volleyball team back at home after a flawless three-game road stretch, extending their winning streak to five after decimating Newberry on Friday night before taking Anderson to the limit the next day, only to fall in five sets. Lincoln Memorial made quick work of Newberry at the start of the weekend, sweeping the Wolves 25-15, 25-21, and 25-8. A sharp contrast from LMU's five-set victory over NC in their first meeting back in September. Securing 26 kills on a 178 hitting percentage, the Lady Rail Splitters held their South Atlantic Conference foe to a negative 20 clip for the game, finding little resistance on their way to a fifth consecutive W. Riley Storms and Kai Wiesman led the way offensively for Lincoln Memorial in the one-sided 3 to nothing decision, each with seven kills, with Emily Walter the leader in assists at 24 and Erica Whitaker producing a team-high 11 digs. Collecting a third straight win via straight sets and having won six of their last seven once Friday's beatdown over the Wolves came to a close, the Lady Rail Splitters quickly turned their attention to the Anderson Trojans, the second-seeded team in the sack, aiming for redemption from a 3 to nothing loss nearly a month prior. Despite almost gaining it in the end, Lincoln Memorial took the close five-set defeat on Saturday, letting a 2-1 to -one advantage slip away. LMU was shell-shocked after the first frame, a Trojans 25-10 blowout there, although the Lady Rail Splitters quickly shook it off for back-to-back -back set wins by 25-23 and 25-20 margins, suddenly in the driver's seat. Things unraveled, however, in the fourth stanza after an Anderson 25-21 rally, eventually ending in a 15-11 triumph by the visitors in the fifth set, only the second time 
time this season that LMU has been pushed all the way to a fifth frame, going one and one. While tallying 53 kills in all, the Lady Rollsplitters couldn't slow down Anderson's 71 kill total. Storms once again LMU's leader on offense with 15 Ks. Lindsey Nartker adding 12 along with 11 digs. Wiesman, Tone Gill, and Danielle Ged combined for 24 kills at 8 each. Ged and Gill tag teaming for 9 blocks. And Walter recorded another monster double-double with 45 assists and 15 digs. Despite a team best 26 digs from Whitaker and a gritty performance overall, Lincoln Memorial drops to 14 and 7 in total, 10 and 5 in conference matchups, but still remains in third place across the league standings after nearly taking down the Trojans. After losing at home for only the second time in 2018, LMU continues their four game Harrogate stand this weekend, facing Mars Hill and Lenore Rhine, the two teams right below the blue and gray in the SAC standings on Friday and Saturday at the Mary Mars Gymnasium. And breathing a sigh of relief on senior day after regaining their composure in a much needed South Atlantic Conference date, the LMU women's soccer squad took out their frustrations from a stunning overtime loss three days earlier, walloping the Coker Cobras 5 to nothing to get back in the win column. The pioneers of Tusculum spoiled Lincoln Memorial's intentions of a four-game winning streak last Wednesday with a shocking 1-0 overtime win. But on Saturday, before honoring the nine seniors in the program, the Lady Railsplitters went back to square one, hammering the winless Cobras from the gun, producing an 18-7 shot advantage, which resulted in five scores. All five of those goals were either guided in or assisted by freshman Jessica Crevero, who notched arguably her most impressive outing out of a sensational debut season, grabbing a hat trick, her third of the year, along with two assists. By the time the clock struck 10 minutes and 44 seconds, LMU had already raced out to a 2-0 lead behind scores from Maria Hernandez and Itzel Ballesteros, the eighth strike of 2018 for the latter, Crevero creating the assist on both occasions. The Italian forward decided that was enough distributing and grabbed the team's final three goals herself, the first coming in the 18th minute on an assist from Rachel Taylor. The freshman poured it on in the 37th minute with goal number two on an assist from Daisy Drake, making it 4-0 Lady Rail Splitters at the half, completing the hat trick nearly 10 minutes into the second half, the only goal of the day that was unassisted. LMU called off the attack at that point, content with a five-goal margin of victory tied for the highest scoring output of 2018, and with a total of 13 scores through 13 games, Crevero lands in second place across the sack, reaching the most points by a Lady Rail Splitter in a single game in three years of eight. Improving to nine and four with a five and three conference resume, Lincoln Memorial moves to fifth in the latest league standings and will close out the regular season with consecutive road contests beginning this Wednesday against the Queens Royals in Charlotte, North Carolina, kicking off at 5.30 p.m. And while the LMU men's soccer team has now equaled the women's club in terms of their South Atlantic Conference situation, clocking in at fifth place after the Saturday Senior Day tune-up with Coker, it wasn't a pleasing end to the weekend for the rail splitters, letting another late lead slip through their fingertips for a 1-1 tie with the Cobras, reaching the 110-minute mark of double overtime with the score still unresolved. In an unbelievable occurrence for Lincoln Memorial, a total of 30 shot opportunities resulted in only a single score coming in in the 32nd minute by senior Victor Perez, his 10th strike of the season, off an assist from Felipe de Souza, his seventh helper of the year. Clinging to that one goal advantage for almost 50 minutes on Saturday, the rail splitters let a rare Coker scoring opportunity fall through. The Cobras tying things up at one apiece in the 81st minute, ultimately forcing an overtime, which led to a second overtime, which led to a permanent stalemate once the final whistle blew. Ending in a draw for the third time in 2018, Lincoln Memorial now holds Holds a 7 and 3 and 3 overall record, along with a 4 and 2 and 2 mark against teams from the South Atlantic Conference. Still good for fifth place in the league, just one game away from a tie for third. It's been an all too familiar story for LMU this season, ending in an unfavorable result in a match that the Rail Splitters played more than well enough to prevail. And all that LMU can do now is head back to the drawing board this Wednesday, preparing for a 3 o'clock date with the Royals of Queens University in Charlotte. The ladies' contest set to follow afterwards. Only two more matches remain on the regular season schedule, and if Lincoln Memorial wishes for a berth in the SAC tournament, they must stay persistent on the road. And for more information on the Rail Splitters' eventful weekend battle with Coker, and for all things LMU athletics in this busy fall semester, you can visit www.lmurailsplitters.com. 
And in the world of high school football, Tennessee and Kentucky only have one more Friday night of regular season action on their radar with Virginia trailing by one week after the events of week 10. And with lots to go over in another chaotic evening, let's take a look at all your final scores from around the region on the gridiron. Starting with the Volunteer State, in the 16th installment of the Battle of the River, the Cumberland Gap Panthers survived a defensive struggle at the Claiborne Bulldogs to win their second straight in the series, 14-7. The first time since 2007 through 2008 that CG recorded back-to-back -back Ws over their arch nemesis, moving to 6-3 in the process, dropping Claiborne to 1-8. The Cougars of Campbell County saw their misfortunes continue against the Clinton Dragons in Jacksboro, losing their second straight by a 29-21 decision, while the Granger Grizzlies' four-game winning streak was halted emphatically by undefeated Greenville, 63 to nothing. The nightmare season for Jellico continued at home against the Eagles of Cosby. The Blue Devils coming up on the losing end of for the fifth straight weekend and the eighth time overall, 49-14. The Hancock County Indians, who had not taken a bye over the entire course of the year, ended their schedule on a sour note, falling to 3-7 after a 48-6 road loss to Rockwood, their third straight L overall. And the Union County Patriots' week off did wonders for UC, handling Sullivan Central 48-0 for their fifth win of the season. Moving on to the Bluegrass State, the Bell County Bobcats suffered no rust after losing their first game of the year the previous week to Corbin, throttling Jackson County by the score of 61-8 to to move to 8-1. and And the misery continues for both Middlesbrough and Pineville, the Yellow Jackets extending their losing streak to 7 on a 50-6 home defeat at the hands of Somerset, while the Mountain Lions dropped their fifth in a row after a 4-1 start, falling to Harlan on the road 40-6. And lastly, in the Commonwealth State, the Lehigh Generals couldn't get over the hump against Wise Central in Norton, dropping a close one to the Warriors, 27-21 for a fourth straight loss. And the Thomas Walker Pioneers at 6-2 took Friday night off in the midst of their bye. Be sure to stay tuned to LMU Community TV Sports this coming Wednesday as we preview the final weekend of the regular season for Tennessee and Kentucky and the penultimate one for Virginia. And this past Saturday marked week eight of the NCAA football season. And for the Vols and the Cats of UT and UK, the Big Orange and the Big Blue went in totally opposite directions on their home turf. Tennessee was able to stop an 11-game SEC losing streak the previous week in a thrilling six-point triumph at Auburn, but couldn't put an end to another streak this third Saturday in October, being one to forget for the Volunteers getting pummeled by first-ranked Alabama 58-21. Already reaching a four-touchdown deficit once the end of the first quarter passed, the Vols saw a quarterback change from Jarrett Garantano to Stanford transfer Keller Christ due to an injury for the former. And although the backup threw for 164 yards and two scores, the Crimson Tide stayed dominant over UT in the Nick Saban head coaching era, dropping the Volunteers to 3-4 and four overall and 1-3 and three in league matchups. It wasn't pretty for the Wildcats of UK, although Kentucky was able to get it done in a defensive battle against Vanderbilt, moving to 6-1 after a 14-7 slugfest in Lexington. The Commodores brought the fight to the Wildcats just as they had in other games in which they were the underdog, although the difference was once more running back Benny Snell Jr. carrying for 169 yards and what turned out to be the team's game-clinching TD with eight minutes remaining, pushing Kentucky to 4-1 in SEC affairs. This coming Saturday, we'll see a pair of conference scuffles for the Vols and the Wildcats in back-to-back -back form on the SEC network. Kentucky, now ranked 12th in the nation, traveling to Missouri at 4 p.m., and Tennessee heading to South Carolina at 730. And we are down to eight drivers in the 2018 NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series playoff as the Hollywood Casino 400 rolled into the Kansas Speedway on Sunday with just four races left until the cup champion is crowned. As the field of 12 drivers that were still on the hunt by the time that was then trimmed to four on Sunday, the number nine vehicle of Chase Elliott crossed the checkered flag at Kansas City first as the victor, staying alive and bolting up to fourth place in the chase standings. Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson finished right behind Elliott in its second and third on Sunday, while Eric Jones and Martin Truex Jr., last season's cup winner, rounded out the top five. With only eight participants left standing once the Hollywood Casino 400 came to a close, the cup rankings now read as follows. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, and Martin Truex Jr., the three most accomplished drivers this season, stand as one, two, and three, while Elliott rolls into fourth following his victory lane lap at Kansas City. 
Clint Boyer, Joey Logano, Kurt Busch, and Eric Almarola remain as the bottom four who just made the cut on Sunday. As the Monster Energy Cup Series continues next Sunday, October the 28th, some more eliminations to take place at the Martinsville Speedway in Virginia for the first Data 500. And that is all for sports over the weekend, but stay tuned as more LMU Community TV news is on the way right after this. So, so we, we were, were walking, walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom pat me turkey and cheese. She's I smart. Really cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't have really another bad day. I really hope I don't have another bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Here we go. We're gonna go out there to rain. Gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, no. oh, no. Oh, yeah. Yes. So much fun. Yeah, Dad. You're so wet. and bananas I want to eat 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 apples and bananas I need to eat 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 apples and bananas why can't I eat 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 apples and bananas One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Thanks for watching LMU Community TV News. I'm Allison Barnett and have a great evening.